Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus Broadcast brought to you by the Jesus Christ International Church, 325 South High Street, right here in Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. My, what a great time we're having at the Jesus Christ International Church as the Lord Jesus walks and in and through and is glorified in his body. Going from glory to glory, for the Lord is that spirit. Not another spirit, he is that spirit. The Lord Jesus is that spirit, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. We'd like you to come join us at the liberty. The liberty we have in the Holy Ghost here at the Jesus Christ International Church, right here in Longview, Texas. As we go out, we're gonna have many tent revivals. You'll see the liberty of the Holy Ghost there. We believe in the power of God, seeing many blind eyes open, seeing, he, seeing many deaf mutes speaking here. Somebody said, I've never seen one. Come out, come out. You will see, we had uh, uh, several that have received the sight. They had uh, a blind lady in a hero and uh, was blind and uh, had uh, all ailments in her body, diabetes, many other things, heart trouble, uh, really a physical wreck. <laughs> And uh, came up for prayer, but more than anything, she wanted her son back delivered to her. And during the meeting, she came up in the prayer line. We prayed for her eyes. The Lord Jesus opened the eyes, healed her body. And she last request was, I want my son back. My son has left me. One year later, we were back over there. It wasn't even a full year when we went from uh, Ahero to Kasumu, and she had to testify. She came up in the front of the crusade and said, please, can I testify? She testified of the Lord healing her, giving her eyesight back. She testified of how her body was healed. But she also testified that God had restored her son to her and that not only and he came back to her, but the young man was now in college and paid her airfare for the lady, the believer, the believing, the handmaid of God to be in that Kasumu crusade. God will do the same thing for you. Whatever you need, he is the I am that I am. He is your healer. He's your provider. He's your counselor. Whatever you need in counsel, you may not know where to, and where to go in life. He is your answer. He'll lead you and guide you. He'll show you the way. He is still on the throne. He still heals. He still saves and delivers from whatever bondage there, for whatever, whatever mountain is in your life. You can speak to that mountain of the Lord and it will be cast into the sea. If we doubt not and only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. We count it an honor to serve with you and the Lord Jesus Christ, and thank you for allowing us to come into your homes and businesses. We're going to be talking about revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not revelations, but the singular revelation, the revealing of Jesus, the unveiling, the apocalypse that many call it, the revealing and the, the manifestation of Jesus Christ when he comes to be revealed in his saints, and being glorified in all them that believe. This is the testimony. You see, there's one likened to the Son of Man, standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. That's the last day church in glory, coming before the coming of the Lord, in the ministry of reconciliation. What is the ministry of Reconciliation. While Jesus was in the earth, in the days of his flesh, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Now, Paul said, we pray you in Christ's stead. He's not here. He's gone back to his throne in glory. Only one throne in heaven. Jesus is on the throne, sat down with his father in, not around, in his throne. Revelation 3.21 and uh, at that point, glorified back, and he said, at that point, now you are the light of the world. While I was in the world, I am the light of the world. Now you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. You, you are now in Christ's stead, 
been given as ambassadors of Christ, representatives of him, be you reconciled to God, giving us the ministry of reconciliation. That's going to come to the fullness in the regeneration when Christ shall reign upon his throne for 1,000 years and we will reign as kings and priests in the earth with him. Before that time, there is a ministry of reconciliation according to Acts 3, 20 and verse 21, 20 and 21, Acts 3, 20 and 21. For the heavens must receive Jesus into the times of the restitution of all things, until the time that all things are restored back to God. You see, they said, uh, they'll Elijah come first and restore the kingdom. Why do John's disciples say that Elijah must come first? Jesus said, Elijah, Elijah must truly first come and restore all things. Putting in a future tense, Elijah truly must first come and restore all things, Matthew 17. But, Elias has already come if you will receive it. This they understood, expected them with John the Baptist. Why? In the spirit of Elijah. They asked John the Baptist plainly, are you Elijah? He said, no, he's not Elijah in the flesh. It's the spirit of Elijah upon him, John the Baptist. But John did not work any miracles. Why? Because there remaineth a ministry of Elijah in the last days. To fulfill Jesus' word and John, as well to John, uh, about John the Baptist, as well as the spirit of Elijah coming again in the last days and restoring all things. For the heavens must receive Jesus until the times of this restitution or the restoration of all things. That is a ministry. That is a ministry of Jesus. It is the last day move of God as was spoken by Jesus in uh, Matthew 17. That Elijah truly must first come and restore all things. He will. You see, Elijah, as he foreran Jesus' first coming in, this, in the spirit of Elijah upon John the Baptist, so will Elijah, in the spirit of Elijah, also forerun Jesus' second coming, the second advent of the Lord, where he appears the second time without sin unto salvation, and whosoever has this hope in himself purifieth himself. The Lord Jesus will appear this second time without sin, unto salvation. First time, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But the second time, he's not coming back to die on the cross again. He's not coming back to reconcile us back to God, to redeem us, to uh, justification and, and uh, sanctification and ultimate glorification. He is this time going to be revealed in his glory. And before he comes, there's going to be a last great call to the world. A last great witness of Jesus. A last great testimony of Jesus. This testimony of Jesus is the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And we're honestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. He that loveth God keepeth his commandments. But the faith of God, the faith that will be restored to the saints in the last days, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. The faith that it takes, they honestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, for the faith that will be delivered to the saints in the last day move of God in the Feast of Trumpets. We have three seasons of the Lord. These are Moed. They are divine appointments of God with man. We have seen these seven feasts literally iterated for us and stated in the uh, book of Leviticus 23. Passover, unleavened bread, the feast of first fruits. All that's in the first season of God. 
That is Christ, our Passover, sacrifice for us. That was uh, uh, literally fulfilled some 2,000 years ago where Jesus, God himself, walked in the days of his flesh, Christ, our Passover, sacrifice for us. The pass, Passover lamb at the preparation on the 14th day of the first month when they were preparing for the feast of uh, Passover in the first season, at that very time, when they came to Jerusalem, there for this feast, Jesus himself, at the preparation, the day of the sacrificing of the Paschal Lamb, Jesus had his hands uh, literally spread and his feet nailed to the cross. They did not know at this exact time of the Passover that it was literally being fulfilled in uh, Jesus Christ, God himself in the days of his flesh literally sacrificed upon a cross for our sin. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The first season there is Passover, which contained three feasts. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits. And the death of Jesus is uh, Christ our Passover sacrifice for us. Unleavened bread, dead flat, no leaven in it. Why? That's the burial of Jesus. What happened in the burial of Jesus? Three days, three nights, Jesus was in the tomb. And he was declared to be the Son of God through the Spirit by the resurrection from the dead. Why? Through the Spirit. Well, during that time, Jesus' the spirit, soul, and body, the human spirit, rational soul, and human body of flesh and blood, that was dead. Buried in a tomb. The Spirit of God going through him both in his human spirit, rational soul, and human body, did not find anything amiss, the perfect, spotless, blameless Lamb of God. And according to the seed of David, declared to be the Son of God, through the Spirit, by the resurrection from the dead. Feast of first fruits, not only the death, the burial, but the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First season, Passover, Christ our Passover sacrifice for us, his burial, and subsequent Resurrection. That's the first season. Happened some 2,000 years ago right here on this earth. Then exactly you would number seven weeks from that day from first fruits and on the morrow. That is you will number seven times seven, 49 days plus one on the morrow and that will be the feast of weeks. Seven weeks and on the morrow which is 50 which is where we get Pentecost 50 days. We will have the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Pentecost there, which is uh, the Pentecostal season, some 2,000 years ago. In Passover, you took a wave sheaf, singular, and waved it before God without leaven. Howbeit, in the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, in the second season of God, the fourth feast, you took wave sheaves and waved them for, before God with leaven. Why? Because God in his harvest was going to give his spirit to the church, but all its sin comes short of the glory of God. He man said he had not sinned, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But we have his treasure in earthen vessels. It's by grace, through faith, are we saved. Now that's been some 2,000 years ago that the Holy Ghost was given, the church age birth, of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now a long time has elapsed. Almost over 2,000 years. You see, we are told in Hosea 6, Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. You mean God does that? Somebody said, no, that's not God. No, but yes, it is. The Lord God said, I kill and I make alive. Shall there be evil in the city? And I, the Lord God, have not done it. That evil there is raw. It means trouble, tribulation. And I, the Lord God, have not done it. The Lord has his way in the wind and in the whirlwind. You see, the, do the devil himself is nothing but a dog on God's chain. He can do nothing. It's only the Lord that works. He is the God 
and his sovereignty that has his way. I kill, I make alive, I, the Lord, do all these things. You see, the Lord God himself said that he, in the days of his flesh, would die on a cross, be buried, and raise the third day. That's the first season. Second season, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Feast of Weeks was fully come, not a second late, not a second early, right on time. Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, the season of God, not a natural feast, but the spiritual feast of the Lord. What are these feasts? It's where we eat the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood. Not eating natural flesh and drinking natural blood, but the spiritual feast of the Lord. The true, the things which are seen are temporal, the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, these are the feasts of the Lord where we feast upon him. It's not the feast of Israel. It's not the feast of the church. It's a feast of the Lord where we eat his flesh and drink his blood. That second season is the feast of weeks that happened some 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. When it was fully come, there were one mind, one accord, and uh, suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Filled all the rooms where they were sitting, clothing, tongues of fire appeared, sat on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. This new thing, this thing that had never been experienced before in that second season, what a phenomenon. Jesus never talked in tongues. Why? Because he's God Almighty. All the prophets would say, Thus saith the Lord, but Jesus said, never said, thus saith the Lord. Why? Because he is the Lord. He'd say, but I say unto you. <laughs> Why? Because he is God. Second season, fourth feast of the Lord, the feast of weeks, feast of Pentecost. Now the church is entering into a new thing. A new thing, a new dimension, a new glory, a new season of God. That season is uh, the season of tabernacles. You see, Christ our Lord, Christ our Passover, sacrificed for us, and we now have and take these feasts and offer them with unleavened bread with the calves of our lips. Praises unto God. See, these are spiritual feasts, not natural feasts, spiritual feasts but they were a type and shadow of the real, the spiritual that was to come. Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us, the death, burial, and resurrection, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Jesus, the first fruits, the first begotten from the dead, that he had preeminence, that he, Jesus Christ, had the preeminence in all things. Then the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Pentecost, where Jesus said in Matthew 16, some of you will not taste of death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Hmm. There were many standing there with him. Jesus said that in shoe leather. Standing among his disciples, Son of you shall not taste of death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Well, we know Judas Iscariot didn't make it because he went out and hanged himself. But we know that there was many there that was alive and well, and Jesus is saying was true. Because as many as at one time, a 500 brethren at one time, had seen Jesus after he was resurrected. When did that happen? Some of you will, will not taste the death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. When did that happen? They saw the Son of Man coming in his kingdom when they received the Holy Ghost. For the wind bloweth, whether soever it listeth, and we know not where it goes. And we hear the sound of it, but knows not where it goes. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit of God. Born of water and of the Spirit, born again. Born of water, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit baptized in the Holy Ghost. Just like the book of Acts said. Now the next season. This new thing, God said, Behold, I do a new thing. Though a man tell it, yet they will not believe it. Behold, I do a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. What is a woman? The church. What is a man? The man child. What is that? Revelation 12. 
I saw a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she cried to veiling in birth. I saw another great wonder in heaven, a great red dragon having seven heads, 10 horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And he went about to destroy the woman and who brought forth the man child before it was born. Oh, but God, God, well, this woman shall he come to bring to the birth and shall he not bring forth? Is my arm shortened that I cannot say? But there's two wings of a great eagle given to the woman where she flieth into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God where she's nourished from the face of the serpent for a time, times, the dividing of a time. And the old dragon, the serpent, the scorpion, and the devil was wroth with a woman, wroth with the church. You see, the church, we fought the old devil as a snake, the serpent. We fought him as a scorpion. We have our own power over all the power of the enemy fed upon serpents and scorpions. But now we have the last, the dragon gives him his seat and great authority. What's the dragon? The great red dragon. It's the greatest persecution against the church that hitherto the church has ever experienced. It's a great red dragon. Having said the heads, ten horns. This great red dragon will, win, will go to make war, war with a woman. War with the church and the remnant of her seed. The remnant of her seed is the remnant of the church which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. He that loveth God keepeth his commandments. How do you know we love God? Because we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. But they also have something called the testimony of Jesus. What is that? That's the faith. The love is keeping the commandments of God. The faith is the testimony of Jesus. What? knowing those things that are coming upon the earth to try the earth. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things, not say. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you disciples, but you're not able to bear them now. I had not seen or ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God had prepared for them that love him, but is revealed by the Spirit, for the Spirit starts with all things, yea, the deep things of God. And the revelation of Jesus Christ given unto St. John the Divine to show unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass. What are those things? The testimony of Jesus. Knowing those things that are coming upon the earth to try the earth, O earth, earth, earth. Hear ye the word of the Lord. To the law and to the testimony. If any man speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in him. What is that? What's that law? It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law of liberty. What is the testimony of Jesus? How can we grasp the testimony of Jesus? What is this remnant of her seed in Revelation 12, the church birthing a man child caught up to God and to his throne? Not the rapture, but a repiso, a state of glory, a church living literally here in the earth that literally come to the fullness, even as kings and priests, as the oil was poured upon Aaron's head, ran down his beard uh, over his garments to his feet. The same oil upon the head, the same oil upon the feet, the same Jesus said, where I am, there you may be also. And that same glory that I received of the Father in the days of my flesh, that same glory I give unto you. Oh, what a time. The church is at the very door. The very time of the greatest move of God this world has ever seen, except in the days of Jesus' own flesh, God manifest in the flesh. Never you're living in the greatest time to be alive. The greatest time this world will ever see in the witness of Jesus, in the testimony of Jesus. It is so great that John, when he saw this great move, he saw man. And this man, he was sure it was the Lord Jesus, Revelation 19, 10. He saw this man and he bowed down to worship him. You see, that man is the Lord Jesus Christ as the head and the church as the body, making but one man. Jesus the head, we the body of the Christ, the feet generation, heaven's my throne, the earth is my footstool. Yeah, there, the, the Antichrist, 
uh, blaspheme the name of God in heaven and uh, those that dwell on the earth. Why? Because he hates all uh, that are called by his name and you should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The Son of Man is but one man, Jesus the head, and the church, the body of the Christ, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, we're in Christ's stead in the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile the world back to God where God, through his church, as ambassadors for Christ, saying, be you reconciled to God. That is a ministry of reconciliation. The power of it is even at the door. The power of it in God's divine appointments with man in the seasons of God is upon the church now. For those that were here, the clarion call of God to realize that this is the time of the new thing a time that the woman will compass a man, a time that the church is going to bring to the birth a man-child caught up to God and to his throne that keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus as the remnant of her seed. Not all the church, but only the ones that are reaching and do hunger and thirst after righteousness that will take a part in this last great day move of God. It's a new thing that the Lord will do. A new thing is a kainos. In the Greek, it means it's something that's never been experienced before by the church. A garment that's never been worn before in Christ. A time of glory such as never been seen before in the church. You see, God has saved the best for the last. John saw this man. He saw this glory that was coming. He saw this man that he just knew was Jesus. And he bowed down to worship him. In Revelation 19, 10, that man said unto John, See thou doest it not. For I am thy fellow servant. Somebody said, that's an angel. No, it could have been, except that man said, And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Not an angel. Don't buy that. Not a voluntary and humility, worshiping of angels, intruding of things into those things which he knoweth not, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Angels, they desire to look into this glory, but they cannot see it. You see, it's the church of the living God that would be lifted up in glory, caught up to God and to his throne. It is the church of the living God coming to the highest glory in the highest season, not in Pentecost. Not in Pentecost, in a Pentecostal move, which we have seen. But in the season of tabernacles. The season of tabernacles. When God will tabernacle, not only just be in Christ and you're the hope of glory, knowing him not after the flesh, but we know him after the spirit, but, in, but a knowledge of the Son of God. Not just gnosko. You see, when it says we know him after the flesh, don't know him anymore after the flesh, but after the spirit. It's knowing Jesus after the spirit. It's a gnosko. We have a knowledge of God in the spirit of God. Know me, him, no more after the flesh, but we know him after the spirit. Jesus is that spirit. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. We all with open face beholding as at a glass the glory of the Lord, looking in the word of God. The Theranutus, the God-breathed word of God, as holy men were moved and spake as they were moved on by the Spirit of God. We all with open face beholding as on a glass this glory. What's the glass? A mirror image of Jesus. Jesus is that word. And on his vesture dipped in blood, Jesus' name, King of kings and Lord of lords. And his name is called the word of God. We all with open face what does it mean? Not closed face, open face. Why does it have to be open? Because you have to be open to the things of God, open to those things, to receive the new things of God. For God has shown forth his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we all with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is not a works of the flesh, 
This is by the Spirit of the Lord. This is by grace, through faith. And the testimony of Jesus is the faith that was once delivered to the saints. What is the faith? It is knowing those things. Faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. The things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. What is the testimony of Jesus? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Sent and signified by his angel unto John. You see somebody said, well that's John over there. That's not me. In Revelation 10 he saw the Lord and there's an angel that took John in and there was a little book in the right hand of him. And it was told to John, go take the little book out of that hand and eat it all. That little book is mentioned four times. John took that little book and he ate it. It was sweet to his mouth and bitter to his belly. And immediately, immediately, it said, thou must again prophesy, preach this word, proclaim it, a proclamation, a promulgation of the word, a proclamation, a sending out of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You must again preach this word before many nations, kindreds, tongues, and kings. You mean God's going to raise John from the dead and he's going to go out here and preach this gospel? No, it's you. It's me, it's us and the body of Christ that will come to this revelation of Jesus into those, those things that are eternal. The things of faith that he's now revealing to his church. The new thing that God is revealing to his body, the church of the living God. These things that are called the testimony of Jesus. The things that John saw this man that had these things, uh, this testimony of Jesus and he was going to worship him. Why? Because the body of Christ will be in the true image of Jesus Christ uh, and for whom he did foreknow, them did he predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And those that he did, did what? Those that he, did, that he predestinated, them he also called. Them that he called, them he also justified. And them that he justified, them he also glorified to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Just as we said in 2 Corinthians 3, going from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. What things are we headed for? What glory? Who paid for these? Jesus did on the cross. I want you to follow with me. I have written some things up here on this board, this easel, that if you understand that there are compulsory offerings, two of them, a sin offering and a trespass offering, which were compulsory offerings. Then we had free will offerings, meat offerings, drink offerings, free will offerings. But compulsory offerings was a sin and a trespass offering. Up here, as we see, and has been written to us in the Old Testament that in uh, uh, Numbers, we read there in Numbers 28 and Numbers 29, you can have your biblical uh, semantics, you can have your biblical notes there from the Word of God, Numbers 28 and Numbers 29 for these feasts. Now Leviticus 23 mentioned these feasts in Numbers 28 and 29, it gives what you offer during these feasts to make these feasts happen as an offering to God. Now, we know the blood of bulls and goats with Hesop did not expiate or wash away or take away one sin. But this was all fulfilled in Christ Jesus. For it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should wash away sins. This Jesus did by offering himself once and for all. The book of Hebrews tells us. Howbeit, every one of these were a type of Christ and his expiation and his uh, uh, literal redeeming blood purchased for us not only redemption, not only justification, 
not only sanctification, but glorification as well. Therefore, in Passover, remember there's three seasons of God and seven feasts. In the three seasons, seasons of God, the first one is Passover, and the season is a moed. It's a holy convocation. You will do no servile work therein. Why? Because it is a holy convocation. It is a moed, M-O-W-Y-O-D-D, which means it is a divine appointment of God with mankind. God stated he was going to do it, wrote it in the Old Testament. Did there show the, the, the Passover, Christ our Passover, death, burial, and resurrection? That is Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. Christ our Passover sacrifice for us. Then 50 days later, seven, the number to you, seven weeks after first fruits, and on the morrow, seven times seven, 49, on the morrow, 50, feast of Pentecost, meaning 50 days, and the Holy Ghost was given. Christ. The kingdom was given. And some of you did not taste the death until you saw that Son of Man coming in His kingdom, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, we've been there for somewhat over 2,000 years. But take a look. How long has it been? A day with the Lord is a 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is one day. Hosea 6, come and let us return to the Lord. For He hath torn, He will heal us. He hath smitten, He will bind us up. After, after the second day, he will revive, revive us. That's revival. Revive us is to revive us. It means to bring to life something that was dead. It's after the second day, he will revive us. After? Yes. And in the third day, he will raise us up. How high? Well, the woman... Cried, travailing in pain to be delivered. The church, birth pangs and sorrows. The child being formed in her womb, she knows not how. Until the day that is a great joy that a man child is birthed. What's a man child? In the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, in the image of Jesus Christ, in the power and the throne glory of Jesus. That means the church has just ahead the greatest glory that the church, even from the day of Pentecost, has yet to experience. My, someone says, we're not even seeing the works done in Pentecost. Well, the former rain was a great rain. It was a moderate rain. He giveth the former rain moderately, but will cause to come down the last great rain of his Strength. They'll make the glory of that latter house greater than that of the former. You see, Christ our Passover is a death, burial, and resurrection some 2,000 years ago. That's two days. Only two days have passed on God's calendar. And he said in Hosea 6, after the second day, I'll revive you. In the third day, we're in the third day now. You see, it's been 2,000, now we're going into the third day, another 1,000 years. And in the third day, I will raise you up and you will live in my sight. Oh my. If you follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. The night is forespent, the day's at hand, the morning star, the bright star, the morning star that Jesus revealed in and through the body of Christ. If we follow the another Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. He will come to us. We're not talking second advent here. That's when he reveals himself. But he will come to us as the rain, former and latter, in the first month. You see, the first month of the civil month become the, the first month, the seventh month of the civil become the first month of the religious and the seventh month of religious is the first month of the civil. <laughs> so we're talking about before the reaper, you know, so or so, the reaper overtakes it. We're talking about a time of a great move of God in the spiritual realm that, that the souls are gathered into the kingdom. As soon as they birth, they come to fullness. The wheat, a great harvest of souls. We're talking here, and I want you to see that all of the sacrifices... All of these sacrifices 
church of the living God. All of these sacrifices, nothing in the world but Jesus. For it's impossible that the blood of bulls and goats or rams or whatever should expiate for one sin. However, it was a type and shadow of the truth that was revealed in Jesus Christ on the cross. What did he pay for? Let's take a look at it. Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us, you offer two young bullocks. That bullock's a priest offering there, a ram. That's your consecration, dedication, a ram of dedication. Seven lambs, that's for the consummation of all things of the first year. Three-tenths deals, therefore books, five, two-tenths deals of flour for the ram and a several-tenth deal of flour for the, for the lambs, each of the seven lambs. One kid goat, goat sin offering, and uh, then it'll be the same in unleavened bread and the same in first fruits. So in the season of Passover, you will have one uh, for Passover, exactly these feasts. Second uh, uh, feast of the Lord, unleavened bread. There is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. His blood paid for all of that. Every bit of it. This he's received of the Father. Destroy this temple in three days. Jesus said, and I will raise it up. Why? Because I am the Father that will raise up my own body of flesh. Well, why did Jesus say, destroy this temple in three days and my Father will raise it up? Well, in one state, he's talking about, I'm with you. I've emptied out of glory. I've made myself of no reputation to be one of you. Now I'm dwelling with you. So I'm going to speak and I'm going to have to pray to the Father because now I've made myself of no reputation. I have humbled myself to be a man and I'm dwelling with you. I'm one of you. But in his glorification, he says, Destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up. Why? Because I have gone back to the glory of the Father. I'm going to raise up my own body of flesh. One, he's speaking humiliation. The other, he's speaking glorification. When you understand that, you will have the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is God manifest in a body of flesh and blood. In the days of his flesh, he works as a man. Therefore, he has to pray to the Father. Why? Because he's one of us. He's going to suffer, die. A man of sorrow is acquainted with grief. Bruce, uh, you know, chastisement or peace of only by stripes were healed. He is going to suffer for us. Tempted in all things like as we are, yet without sin. In all things made like unto his brethren. But over here, he's gone back to the glory of the Father. Father, glorify me with thine own self. In his glorification, God Almighty sitting upon the throne of his glory. All power in heaven and earth given unto me, Jesus said. Matthew 28, 18. Acts 2, 36, let all the house of Israel know surely that same Jesus whom you crucified, God hath made him. Jesus said, I will raise up my own temple. I am that father, I'll raise up my own body of flesh. God hath made him, that is, Jesus himself made his own body, both Lord and Christ. Lord Jehovah God Almighty in Christ, the Holy Ghost. The First Timothy 6, 15, he'll show the blessed and only potentate, King of kings, Lord of lords, who only hath immortality. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, nor see, nor can see. Who is that? The Lamb of God. What does heaven call him? The Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's God. What does John see him as? The Lamb. One and the same. He is both the root and the offspring. The root, the father of, and the offspring of David. Revelation 22. So you see, it's Jesus working in and of himself for our salvation. In these, and I want you to see the power of this. The coming glory and the great power that is yet to be revealed in his saints. The new thing that God has already paid for in full and yet to be experienced in the body of Christ until he brings many sons unto glory. In Passover, there was two young bullocks around, seven lambs of the first year, three-tenths of bow for the bullock, three-tenths deal of flour for a ram, and a several-tenth deal for the seven lambs and one kid goat. And unleavened bread, the exact same thing again, ditto. In the third, first fruits, the same thing again, ditto. Why? Because the Lord God there is praying for our death, burial, and resurrection, for our redemption, sanctification, and glorification. Take a look over here in the trumpets. Now, when we come to the trumpets over there, somebody said, well, what about Pentecost? That's all in here. This is in the season there of uh, the uh, Passover and the Feast of Weeks uh, all happens there within the first month on the 14th day of the first month and 50 days after first fruits tied in there, the Feast of Weeks, Feast of Pentecost. 
Now look at this. The second season, we've been in for over 2,000 years. After the second day, he will revive us. Second day, it's been 2,000 years. Passover, Pentecost. If you've got the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, if the Spirit dwell in you, that also dwell in Christ Jesus, or so quicken and make alive your mortal body. But if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. What are we talking about? That's been two days. Been 2,000 years, two days, 2,000 years, two days since uh, the Holy Ghost was given. Now we're coming into the 10th day of the seventh month. That's a seven month tissue. That's the reason why in Haggai, the feast prophet, you'll see on the 21st day of the seventh month, Tishri of the Hebrew ethneim. That is the seventh month. That is, if we follow him, the Lord, the Lord his going forth is prepared as a morning. He will come to us as a rain. The Feast of Weeks, Pentecost was a former rain. Tabernacles will be the latter rain. He will come to us as a rain, former and latter. What's a former rain? Pentecost. What's a latter rain? Trumpets in the Feast of Tabernacles. Let's take a look. What is now the offering in the Feast of Trumpets? One young bullock. One ram and seven lambs. Why? Because the price has already been paid. Those there to the Day of Atonement is going to be the exactly same offering there. But I want you to see what we're coming in in Tabernacles. That's what I want you to see. As you are beholding this, behold the real Jesus broadcast, the power of the blood. It's all the blood of Jesus. If we rejoice at all, we'll rejoice in the cross. Why? Because that's where the blood was shed. That's his government. And it's still there. Any man come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up your cross. Oh no, I don't want the cross. I want money, mammon, fortune, fame, notoriety. No, no. Uh -uh. He said, go pick up your cross, deny yourself, go pick up your cross, pick up and follow me. Any man seek to, seek to save his life is going to lose it. Any man will lose his life for the gospel's sake, the same shall find it. What do we have here? I want you to see that in this new thing, on the first day or the 15th day of the seventh month, you see from here, from the first day to the 10th day is the Feast of Trumpets. This is called the 10 days of all, of self-examination. The ten days of all, A-W-E, is what the Jew will call it, or Israel will call that. This is the reason Jesus said they're going to cast you into prison for ten days. Why? It's the Feast of Trumpets. It's a time of sufferings and trials, testings and temptation. Why? That you can come forth as pure gold. They're going to cast you into prison for ten days. Be you faithful in death, I'll give you a crown of life. He's talking about the Feast of Trumpets, the ten days of all. That's where you do self-inspection, introspection, examining yourselves, judging yourselves, lest you be condemned with the world. Then the day of atonement, a day of at one month with God, that everything you paid for, now we're coming into this glory. What kind of a glory are we going to? What is paid for us to go into that millennial reign, that thousand years? Solomon, you must have a thousand. A thousand is perfected glory. All the keepers of the vineyard, 200. Are the keepers of the vineyard? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. 200, apostle, 200, prophet, 200, evangelist, 200, pastor, 200, teacher will give a thousand literally perfected glory. Song 8, Solomon, you must have a thousand. Solomon hath a vineyard in Baal Haman, possessor of a multitude. For all the keepers of the vineyard, 200. You must have a thousand perfected glory. That's a thousand year millennial reign of Jesus on the seventh day. We come into on the first day of tabernacles. And that's the reason why at the Jesus Christ International Church, we're calling ourselves not Pentecostals, but Tabernacleists. Why? Because we're looking for that day. We have this hope in ourselves that he will appear the second time without sin and salvation. Why? Because he that hath this hope in himself purifies himself. We're looking for that day. Preparing to meet our God. And on that first day, you will offer not only the regular offerings, but you will add to it 
13 bullocks. Oh my, that's a king priest offering. The king literally sends, he must offer a bullock. Same way, first day, 13 bullocks. Uh, second day, which is 16th of the month, 12 bullocks. Third day, 11 bullocks. Uh, fourth day, 10 bullocks. Fifth day, nine bullocks. Sixth day, eight bullocks. Seventh day, or the 21st day of the seventh month, which you read in Haggai, the second chapter of the Feast Prophets, the 21st day of the seventh month is the seven uh, bullocks, which has been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, starting on the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st of Tishri of the seventh month, the 21st day of the seventh month. And that's when God said, I'll make the glory of the latter house greater than that of the former. On the 21st day of the seventh month, hey guy, the prophet prophesied. And then uh, it says, and on the last great day, or that eighth day, from the eighth day to the see, there's only one bullock offered. Why? Because there'll be king, one king over the earth, and his name, one. How much blood is in Passover? Well, there's a lot of blood. There's uh, two young bullocks, a ram, seven lambs, and then we got the flour, the, the, the meal offerings, the meat offerings, a kid, a goat, oh, and then we do it again in unleavened bread. We did it again in first fruits. We do the same thing again. Look over here. Now we get in trouble. So we got a young bullock, a ram, seven lambs. Now we got David Tom, same thing there. But look how much blood you've got in tabernacles. What about this new thing? How much power? How much power? There's power in the blood. Wonder working power in the blood. Everything that Jesus paid for on the cross will be experienced in the body of Christ. And the seasons of God in and through the body of Christ, you, the church of the living God, has already been paid for, signed, sealed, and delivered with Jesus' own blood, said and signified it with his own blood. Look how much blood is here. 13 bullocks plus 12 on the second day is 25. Third day, 36. Fourth day, 46. Fifth day, uh, uh, fifth day there, 53. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 13, 12, 25, 36, 46, uh, 55, uh, uh, 63, 70. 70 bullocks have been offered in tabernacles. Why? Because 70 is the number of restitution and restoration of all things. 70 weeks that are determined upon thy city, upon thy holy city, Jerusalem, to rebuild and to restore Jerusalem. This is a restoration and restitution of all things. This will usher in the millennial where we will live and reign with Christ a thousand years. This is the, the amount of blood shed that Jesus and the power of his own blood purchased for us in those 70 bullocks. And each day is a higher glory. Each day is a higher glory. Each day in a perfect seven going from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Each day brings us higher and higher unto God. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. What? The day where there's only one bullock. One, and his name one. One king over the earth, and his name one. I'm running out of time. Right here, you'll see the power of the blood. This is the new thing that Jesus has purchased for you and for all the bride of Christ that will enter into that glory. We want to make available to you and this will certainly why. And one other thing I want to say, 70 bullocks. Why? Because in the table of nations in Genesis 10, there are 70 nations. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, paid for on the cross of Jesus Christ with his own blood. Tell me, it's definitely going to come to pass. Well, neighbor, I see our time's gone. We want to thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, your businesses. What, my, what a time, what a glory. We are all living in as a, as a great expectation of our Lord to be revealed in and through the body of Christ. We, we want you to come and be with us if you have a chance, don't have a church home. Uh, Jesus Christ International Church has somewhat over 400 churches internationally. We'd like to come to you to be a part with us at uh, 325 South High Street, right here in Longview, Texas, right across from Kilgore College. Write to me, Dennis Beard, Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. Visit us on the website, dennisbeard.org. Uh, better than that, come and visit us. And now we're going to make an offer to you. 
Please take advantage of it. I know it'll be a great blessing as uh, you behold the real Jesus. We count it an honor to come into your homes, your businesses with Behold the Real Jesus, as you have seen a controversial but yet true Jesus Christ. We have a great gift offer for you this month, a book that I wrote several years ago called The Errors of the Trinity. It goes into the origin of the Trinitarian doctrine. Where did it come from? Binitarianism, oneness doctrine, and the true one God Jesus revelation in both his humiliation and glorification. You want to get it. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Normally $25, but we've made a gift offer along with that, the DVD, Behold the Real Jesus. It's a nuts and bolts uh, study on Jesus Christ in both his humiliation and glorification on a DVD format. We are offering both this month, The Heirs of the Trinity, a 455-page book breaking down uh, the origin of the Trinitarian, Binitarianism, Oneness Doctrine, uh, as well as the DVD, Behold the Real Jesus, a $45 value for a gift of $25 or more. We're going to make this offer to you, JCIC, offer number 20. Write to me, Dennis Beard, Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. We'll get it right out to you again. That's JCIC, offer number 20. Uh, there, request the book, The Heirs of the Trinity, and Behold the Real Jesus, DVD, and we'll rush it right out to you. Gift of $25 or more to help the ministry go on. And as you know, we go by your gifts and offerings as it airs, uh, by your love for the true Jesus. Until the next time, Behold the Real Jesus. Thank you.